Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is 2022. Time to study the Bible in 2022. That's right. Just like you studied the Bible in 2021, we're going to study it some more in 2022. In fact, we understand that this is a year as we've been declaring and we are decreeing that this is a year where you're going to get fat. You're going to get fat spiritually and you're going to get fat naturally. That's right. This is your year of being fat. F-A-T, as we're saying by the Spirit of God. F stands for faithful. A stands for attitude. And T stands for teachable. We're going to be taught and trained and educated in the things of God. And we're going to get fat spiritually. And we're going to tear the devil's kingdom down this year in 2022 as we move forward in the things of God. Remember, Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And we're seeking God. We're pursuing God. We're not going to be carnal minded. We're going to be spiritually minded because to be carnal minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And I'm telling you, God's going to have us being fat this year. Hallelujah. And we're going to see what God wants us to see. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all that have been watching with me and been staying with me, you know what we are declaring about 2022. Psalm 65 verses 9 through 11. Amen. Verse 11 says that God crowned it this year with his goodness and he's going to drop his fatness upon us. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. It's going to be exciting. So come on. I want you to log on. I want you to text somebody, call somebody, email them. Come on. Let's not only get fat ourselves off the word of God, but let's help others do the same. Come on. Get in touch with that grandson. Get in touch with that granddaughter. Tell that grandchild, amen, to put down, glory to God, the games and playing on those games and tell them you need them to pay attention to the man of God. Tell them there's a word and we're going to look in this word, amen, and be set free in our minds, set free in our spirit. And we're going to rise to those levels and heights spiritually that God wants us to rise to. Remember, God wants us to have the best of both worlds, the here and now and on the other side. But in order to do that, we have to understand what he really wants to do is to save us and not only save us because there are a lot of people who are saved, but they're not spiritual. And God wants us to be spiritual. He wants us to be spiritual minded. He wants to be people who will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness knowing that all other things will be added unto us. He don't want us to die like that rich man did in the Bible. He died like a fool because even though he was fat naturally, he wasn't fat spiritually. He wasn't doing good spiritually and he died as a fool. He says, so is everyone that layeth up treasure for himself here on this earth and is not rich or fat, hallelujah, toward God. And that's what we want to be. We want to be rich toward God. How do you do that? By studying the word of God. Study, Paul told Timothy, to show yourself approved. And that's what we're going to do. A workman that needed not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Come on, give me some more of you a chance, chance to log on here. Chime on with us. Amen. I got a whole hour with you. Push and hit that like button. Hit that share button. Come on, hit that share button so all your Friends and those that are in your circle can hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to start this year, 2022, off right by being a person that will meet me here on this platform every Tuesday night at 730. I guarantee if you listen at me, you will learn and you will grow. Hallelujah. We're going to feed you with knowledge, wisdom and understanding that will make sure you grow. All right, let's get ready to have a word of prayer right now before we go into tonight's teaching. Hallelujah. Again, we're here on this platform every Tuesday at 730. We're here every Thursday doing a program called Sharp Points. And then we're here every Sunday morning. Amen for now. Amen. At 1030. 
And if you missed this past Sunday service, you can go back over and look at it on this platform and YouTube and check out what we've been talking about, what I just talked about, about being fat. Hallelujah. Glory to God is very, very important. They that trust in the Lord, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, amen. He said they shall be made fat. God wants us to be fat this year. Again, fat, F-A-T, F stands for faithful. You got to be faithful, got to be committed. Amen. Even the more to the things of God. Hallelujah. Because if you're not faithful with that which is little, God can't make you rule over that which is much. The Bible said a faithful man shall abound in blessings. So if you want to increase in the blessings of God, you must be faithful. Confidence in an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Be faithful this year. Be faithful to the things of God. Be faithful to your local church and your leader. Be faithful. Hallelujah. And then be a person with a good attitude and then be teachable. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you're going to say and do in this place right now. I thank you that you are the one who have made us what we are. We're nothing without you. We're nothing without your word. So speak to us right now. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips. Those that are watching, give them a special touch tonight. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. All right. Let's get into this teaching tonight. We are going to move further down the line. We're talking about knowing our identity in Christ. This is so important that we know who we are in the anointed one. We know we are as a result of the one who shed his blood, went to the cross and was raised from the dead. He did what he did so that you and I could have a new identity that we could no, would no longer be who we once were before we got to know the Lord. There are people that are in Adam and there are people that are in Christ walking this earth. The color of your skin is not more as much as important as being in Christ. Being in Christ is everything. It shifts the way that you function, the way that you fight, the way that you do life as a whole. Now, I get into that in a few minutes. Listen, we said that Jesus constantly declared who he was and so must we. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life, I'm the resurrection, I'm the bread, hallelujah, I'm the light, I am, amen, that I am. Jesus knew that he was he, he was the I am, and he declared that, and we must declare who we are so that we won't fall prey to living out a lifestyle that is contrary to who God made us to be in Christ. We must boldly declare who we are. We said that our identity, knowing who we are and our identity in the Lord Jesus Christ entitles us, entitles you and I to the benefits of heaven. See, all the benefits of heaven, healing, prosperity, victory, joy, unspeakable, full of glory. All of this belongs to us who are in Christ, who are the children of God. Remember, those of us who are saved, we're called the children of God. Those who are not saved are the children of the devil. That's what the Bible says, and we must believe what the Bible says. Somebody said, we're all the children of God, not according to the word. According to the word, the children of God are those who are born again. Those who are not born again are the children of the devil. So before you and I got saved, we were the children of the devil. That's why the works of the devil or the actions of the devil, we were going right along with it. We were encouraging others to engage in it because we were not a child of God. We were not the children of God. Now, we said that our identity in Christ can only be known by revelation. So it is a revealed thing based on the word and the scriptures. It's not based on how I feel. 
Well, I feel like I'm a child of God. Got to do with how you feel, ma'am. Well, I don't feel like I'm saved. Got nothing to do with how you feel. You have to understand we walk by faith, not by sight. And we live in the arena of what God is saying. We function by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We live in the arena of revelation. And this is very, very important that as we humble ourselves before God and as we receive the things of God like a little child, God reveals more and more to us as we walk with him. And it's important that you understand that the world system functions in ignorance, in darkness, the body of Christ or the church. We function in revelation. We function in knowledge of God. We function in the light. So light means revelation. Darkness means ignorance. So before we got saved, we did a lot of things ignorantly because we did not have the light of the glorious gospel shining in our hearts, making known unto us who we were in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So again, our identity entitles us to the benefits of heaven, titles us to healing. Remember, Jesus saw that woman that was bowed together and Jesus said, if y'all are loosing your animals and all of that, ought not this woman be loose, seeing she is the daughter of Abraham. So because we're the seed of Abraham, because we belong to Christ, we're the seed of Abraham, that's part of our identity, then we are entitled to healing. We're entitled to deliverance. Now I said we function, this is important, I told you, make sure you make note of this, that we function, we fight, and we flow out of our identity. We function, we fight, and we flow out of our identity. Those three L's, function, fight, flow. Function, fight, flow. God does the same. God cannot be saying to us that he's Jehovah Jireh, which means God will provide, or he's a provider, but he doesn't provide. He must function, he must fight, and he must flow out of his identity. He cannot be saying he's Jehovah Rapha and making people sick because Jehovah Rapha means I'm the Lord that healeth thee. I'm the one that makes you well. I'm the one that gives you therapy and heals you and delivers you. So that's his name. You function, you fight, and you flow out of your identity. He's called, amen, Jehovah Rai. He's our shepherd. So he has to shepherd us like a shepherd does. He's called Jehovah Sikhanu. So he must be righteous in everything that he does or else he could not say, I'm the Lord, thy righteousness. All of this is part of who he is. He's the one that sanctifies. And I can go on and on and on. Maybe I'll do a teaching, amen, about the names of God, because a lot of people don't understand that God functions. He fights and he flows out of his name. That's why you need to know who he is. What are the names of God? All of this stuff is important. It's not just in the Bible. It's how God appeared unto men and made known himself unto men so that men will begin to call him by that name because that's how God functioned. That's how God fought for them. And that's how God flowed with them. Hallelujah. And so we function, we fight and we flow out of our identity. Now, listen at me. You need to go back and listen at these other parts. This is part seven of this teaching. And I don't want to go back over all of these names of us being chosen, called, justified, amen, peculiar people, kings, priests, saints, anointed ones, sanctified sons of God, heirs of God. I am on number 65. Do you not know that there are Way more names than I could ever have time to to, to uh, teach you. But thus far, listen, we are we have covered 65 names or 65 things 
that God says in his written word that we are. See, if you don't know that being saved means what? Being a warrior. How are you going to ever fight when a trial and a test come up? That's what a lot of saints do. They don't know that they're they're not just saint. Saint mean holy. You're holy, but you're also called to be a warrior. A warrior fights. A warrior's fight back. A warrior kick back, fight back. He doesn't give in. He doesn't quit. But if you don't know that's who you are, you will function like a grasshopper and you will see yourself as a grasshopper or you'll see yourself as a nobody. And then you mess up everything because you won't function right. You won't fight right and you won't flow right. But when you know who you are, you will function that way. You will fight that way and you will flow that way. And everybody around you have a right to expect that out of you. Just recently, a man, a football player, and of course, we need to be continually praying for him, took off his jersey and everything and walked off. Why? Because the coach was asking him to go back in the game. For whatever reason, he didn't want to do it, took off his coat, uh, jersey and everything else and, and, and left the football field. Now, think about it. If you're a football player and you're playing on a team, what are the teammates expecting you to do? To play, to play the game. Why? Because you are a football player. They are not paying you to take off your jersey or not play the game. They're paying you. The owners are paying you to get in that game and do and perform in your role. Hallelujah. If you if you're not a quarterback, they ain't expecting you to throw the ball because you're not a quarterback. If you if you are a defensive lineman, then they're expecting you to tackle somebody, not throw the football. So you function out of your title. I mean, when I played a man uh, as I was coming up in the midget lead and the, the JV league and all that, they would say all the defensive players get on one side, all the offense players get on. the. Well, if you didn't know what you were, how are you going to know where to get? How are you going to know where to get? When they say all the quarterbacks line up over here. Well, if you don't know who you are, I don't know what I am. Well, how are you going to know where to go? So it's important that we know our identity in Christ. Who are you in the Lord? I know you're saved and you know you're saved, but do you know what that means? Do you know the identity that you're now carrying, that you're now to walk as a person in Christ? And I'll get into that in a little bit. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, we talked about being a, a cheerful giver, a sword. That's part of your identity, a sheep. A righteous woman, a righteous man, the redeem of the Lord. We are written epistles. We are the household of faith. We are the tribe of Judah. We are Christians. We are, the, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are sent. We are adopted. We are predestinated. We are the, uh, we're his workmanship. We are the circumcision. All of this is telling you who you are. Now, we are on 65 right now. And the 65th thing that we are talking about is that you are the healed. You are the healed. That's who you are. You are the healed. Listen at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. So, he said, ye were healed. Well, when did I get healed? Did I get healed when the doctor said I was healed or was I healed before? He's telling you that you were healed by the stripes of Jesus. Well, when did Jesus take those stripes? Was it yesterday? Will it, is it something that's going to happen or he already took them? Jesus already taken the stripes. He took those stripes almost 2000 years ago. So Jesus paid a price for you to be called the healed of God. So you are healed. You are healed when you claim it. Remember, all the promises of God are received through faith, through you mixing and believing your faith with that word. Remember, the Bible said the word being preached did not profit them nothing, being not mixed with faith in them that heard it. So they heard the word, 
but they didn't mix their faith with what they heard. You have to mix your faith with what you're hearing now. And say, I am the healed of God. Well, my body don't feel like it. I still got. Well, you got to confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart until you see the manifestation of who you are calling yourself. Because you're not that because of what you see. You're that because of what God said. You are who God says you are. You can do what God says you can do and you can have what God says you can have. Remember the things that God is telling you to do and be and have with men. These things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. They're possible with God. Hallelujah. Well, the doctor said, ain't no way, ain't no healing for this. I got to die of it. That's what the doctor said. He has diagnosed something that he doesn't have a cure for. So what? Remember what Jesus just said through Apostle Peter. With his stripes, ye were healed. So healing is the children's bread. And the Bible tells us in Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Well, what sin is it if I ask God to forgive me that I won't receive forgiveness for? Every last one, except blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of most people ain't, ain't haven't done that. Amen. It's very, it's not as simple as people try to pretend like it is. Amen. But at any rate, amen, he forgiveth all our iniquities, watch this, and he healeth all our diseases. He healeth. He continues to work, continue to manifest that healing anytime we're sick. Anytime we're sick, we have a right to claim our healing. It's been bought for, it's been paid for, it belongs to us, and we need to receive it by faith and said, by faith, I'm healed. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm the healed of the Lord. My body is healed. My body is healed. My body is healed from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I am healed. I'm well. I'm whole. I'm without pain. I'm without disease. I am the heal of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I'm healed of this virus. I'm healed of Corona. Still may be coughing, <laughs> but you say I'm healed. I'm healed in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? Because his stripes have already covered it. His stripes covered it. And you are calling those things which be not in the natural as though they were because everything starts out from the spirit realm and goes to the natural realm. It doesn't start from the natural and go to the spiritual. It starts from the spiritual and come to the natural. Every good and every perfect gift coming down from the father of lights. That's what the book of James says, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So you are healed. You need to confess it with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. That's the way you get to your deliverance. You get it through faith. All right. Here's an example. God said to Abraham, I'm changing your name from Abram to Abraham. What does Abraham mean? Man, he's saying, I'm calling you the father of many nations. Well, what? He was walking around saying, I'm Abraham. And he didn't have a child in the natural. He, he of course, Ishmael was born, but Ishmael wasn't the seed of promise. But he was walking around saying, I'm the father of many nations. What's your name? Abraham, the father of many nations. What was God trying to get him to do? Call yourself who I call you before you see anything. You got to call yourself heal before you see anything move. Before you see manifestation, you heal, you heal, you heal. And guess what? Look at Abraham now. Who is he? 
the father of many nations. Hallelujah. Glory to God, because you are who God says you are. You're not who man says you are. You're not who some woman says you are. You're who God says you are. Hallelujah. Number 66. We are branches. We are branches. Jesus is divine and we are the branches. We are connected to him. Look at John 15 and 5. John 15 and 5 says, I am the vine. This is Jesus talking. I am the vine. And ye, ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringing forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. He's the vine, meaning we are attached to him. And what's in him is in me. And what he, substance that he's releasing is the substance that I'm releasing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And as long as I stay attached to him, as long as I don't pull myself away from him, I'm going to keep bringing forth fruit because he's the vine. I'm the branch. And therefore, the vine causes the branch to have the substance in it. That's in the vine. And therefore, you see something bud, not because of the branch, but because of the vine. Hallelujah. So when people see you bringing forth love, they know it's because you're connected to the vine. When they see you bringing forth joy it's because you're connected to the vine. When they see you bringing forth peace it's because you're connected to the vine. Hallelujah. The moment you detach yourself from the vine, the branch dies and brings forth nothing. So we are the branches. He's the vine. Hallelujah. I'm not the vine. You're not the vine. We're the branches. Hallelujah. When you see a pecan tree and you see the branches out there bringing forth, where are the pecans? The pecans are on the branches. But the branches are not the source of the pecans coming forth. The pecans are there because the branches are connected to the vine, to the tree that brings forth pecans. The moment that branch falls off that vine or that tree, guess what the branch does? Brings forth nothing. And he said, you can't bring forth anything. Ha-ta-ta-ba. Lest you abide in me. We have to settle down in him. Woo. Number 67. Let's look at another one. We are called what? We are the appointed to obtain salvation. This is important. You are appointed to obtain salvation. What does salvation mean? Salvation means deliverance. Salvation means safety. Salvation means wholeness and wellness. We are called to bring forth or appointed to obtain deliverance. All right. Look at first Thessalonians chapter five, verse nine. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse nine. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation or deliverance by our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are appointed. See, we are appointed to go to heaven. Everybody, once we're saved, we have an appointment to go to heaven. We're not appointed to wrath. People say, aren't you worried about uh, going to hell? Not if you're saved. It's not your worry anymore. You're not worried about that anymore because you understand that you have been saved by not by your works, but by what Jesus Christ has done. So you got that covered now. It's like a person that take out insurance. Once you take out life insurance on yourself, you don't every day get up worrying about, I wonder what will happen to me if I die. What am I, my wife going to have? I don't worry about that now. You got that covered. You walk out of that insurance office knowing what? That if something happens to you, your wife and your children are covered. You don't worry about that anymore. You now... Start doing other things in life because you obtain that insurance. Well, we've already obtained salvation. We've been appointed to obtain salvation. 
Heaven is in our view. So when a Christian dies, we celebrate at their funeral. We don't act like people who don't have any hope. We don't fall to pieces. But we said, my God, <laughs> hallelujah, sister so-and-so, hallelujah, has gone on to be with the Lord. She's absent from the body. He's absent from the body. But his spirit, his soul is present to be with the Lord. Now, they're going to get another body. But right now, they're at rest. Hallelujah. All right. Number 68. Let's look at 68. This is these are this is who we are. Listen at this one. Victorious. Do you not know that you are to be called victorious? I think it was one great songwriter wrote a song called My Name is Victory. That's right. You need to type that down. So I am victorious. You need to let the devil know, devil, I got victory every day, every day, every day. You know, when people, people a long time ago, they would sing a song about every day will be Sunday. Every day, every day will be Sunday. They talking about the other side. But for the child of God, every single day is a day of victory. Stop thinking that you're having defeated days and, and victory day. That ain't how the child of God lives. No, you got to know who you are. You are called to victory. You have been chosen for victory. Victorious living is what we are about. Listen at the Bible. First John five and four. First John five and four says for whatsoever is born of God. Haven't you been born of God? Overcome it. The world. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. We overcome this stuff that's in the world. For this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. So we use our faith to walk as victorious men and women. You are victorious Hallelujah, your name is victory. You're victorious. Well, girl, ain't you worried about that? No. Girl, if I were you, I'd be worried about that. Why? I got victory. I got victory. Hallelujah. I got the victory. I got the victory right now. I got the victory. You got the victory. We have the victory. They sing a song in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have to flee. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, the name of Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Woo, glory to God. We sing that song. Oh my God, the glory will fall into place. People will be healed. People will be delivered. Because what we were saying was, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Satan got to get out of the way. He got to flee. He got to take off and run when you declare who you are. Who are you? Who are you, sir? Who are you, ma'am? You put it down and say, I'm victorious. That's who I am. When you see me coming in the door, you're seeing victory going somewhere to happen. Glory to God. When you see me leave out the door, you're seeing victory going somewhere to happen. Everywhere I walk, everywhere I talk, I expect victory to show up. Hallelujah. We should never expect to lose a battle. We should never expect to lose a, 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 in, in, in warfare. No, we expect to win because we are victorious. Hallelujah. We're victorious. Woo, 69. Let's look at 69. Here goes 69 of these things of who we are. You and I are new creations or new creatures. We are what? New, not old. You're not the same old person you used to be. You don't have the same old walk and talk you used to have. 
You don't listen at the same old music you used to listen to. You don't go the same old places you used to go. You don't do the same old thing you used to do because you are a new person. You are a new creature. You are a new creation in Christ. That's who you are in Christ. Y'all know, listen at what the Bible says. Galatians 6 and 15. Galatians 6 and 15 says, for in Christ Jesus, that's what we are in the anointed one in Christ Jesus. Neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. See, in other words, when the Bible was written, the Jews were given the oracles of God or the things of God first to deal with. Jew first, then the Gentiles. And what Paul is trying to say to the saints at Galatia that neither circumcision means anything or uncircumcision. He's talking about in the flesh. Now, our circumcision today, as we say, we are the circumcision, but it's the circumcision of the heart. But in the time in which God established a covenant with Abraham, the covenant was based on Abraham being circumcised. Abraham had to circumcise Himself, And he also had to make sure that every male child was circumcised that came forth out of a female womb. That was the way they were covenant in covenant, rather, with God. But Paul is saying that, hey, whether you are a Jew outwardly or a Gentile outwardly, he's going by the color of the person's skin and the nationality of a person. He said, that doesn't mean anything. He said, the main thing that matters is that you be a new creature. Because why? When you get in Christ, look at 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, in the anointed one, he is a new creature. There it is. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. First of all, it happens where? In our spirit. And then what we do, we get in the word, renew our minds so it can happen in our soul. And then it'll manifest in our lives. So people should see us walking different, talking different, living different. If you the cuss, you need to put that cussing down. If you the drink, you stop that drinking. Amen. If you be going to clubs, all this misbehaving that we were doing before we got to know the Lord. We now are new creations in Christ. We're new creatures in Christ. We have a new spirit. Therefore, because we're new inwardly, things change outwardly. Everything has shifted inwardly. The heart of stone has been taken out. A heart of flesh is in now. We have a heart that's sensitive to God. Hallelujah. So we are what? New. Brand new. In fact, if you study this word new and look it up in the Greek, it means one who has really never existed before. Ta ta da baba kosha. So you're not some old thing being covered up, made to look new. He didn't say if any man be in Christ, he is a renewed creature. Mm -mm. He said new creature of being that has never, ever existed, just like you have never been here before. That's why it's called being born again, born anew. Right. When a person is born into the world, what they call it, a newborn baby, a newborn baby. This baby has never been here on planet Earth before. He or she is a newborn baby. Hallelujah. So when we get born again, we're like new. We are a new creature. Glory to God. Number 70. Let's go to 70. You mean there are 70 things? Oh, there are so many. I, I'm just only going to give you about 80 some of them. But man, there's many, many more. The Bible tells you who you are and, and you what? You function, you fight, 
and you flow out of who you are. If you don't know who you are, you're not going to be able to fight correctly, flow correctly. You're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to function correctly. How, if I don't know the purpose of this cup, how in the world am I going to know what to put in it or what to do with it? I need to know what it is. This is a cup. Well, what's the purpose of a cup? A cup purpose is to hold fluids or liquids in it. All right, let's get with number 70. 70, we are capable or able ministers. We are capable or able ministers of the New Testament. That's who we are. We're capable and able ministers of the New Testament. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. He says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Who hath made us, who hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Now, again, Paul was one who God apprehended. God got a hold of this man and set him free and changed his life. From Saul to Paul, this guy, life was changed. And he's saying as a minister, he's saying that God has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Now, the, every preacher is to preach the word in light of the New Testament. You can look at Old Testament scripture, but you have to make sure that when you look at Old Testament scripture, that you're not using scripture from the old that doesn't line up with this born again experience that we have in Christ. You have to make sure that it lines up line upon line, precept upon precept, and that it deals with the finished work of Christ. Because Christ did and made possible for us all the things that we could not make possible for ourselves in striving to keep the law or the thing that God told them to do as people under the law. So the Bible says we're not under the law, but we're under grace. Christ brought us away under, I mean, away from the law for he was the fulfilling of the law so that we could live under grace. And so we ought to be able ministers of the New Testament. And I've seen some people who don't understand this. They, <clears throat> they, they try to take Old Testament things and make it applicable for those of us who are on the New Testament. Amen? Yeah. I've seen people who believe that they can't pray till they get a prayer shawl. If you never get a prayer shawl, if you never get a prayer shawl, I got one, but I don't use it to pray up on them. I don't have to have it to pray up on because I can pray to God any place, any time and anywhere. And he'll hear me. Why? Because I'm under the New Testament. I'm under, I don't need the blood of a bull or blood of a goat to get to God. Christ has made it possible through his blood for me to boldly come into the presence of God. Christ made that possible. Hallelujah. I don't need to be in the building to talk to God, to praise my God. I can praise him in the bathroom. I can praise him in the living room. I can praise him in my car. I can praise him in the morning. I can praise him in the noonday. Hallelujah. I do not have to go to a priest and tell the priest my problem so that the priest or the preacher can take my problems and issues to God. No, that's Old Testament. We under the New Testament. You can call on God 
without going to the priest and confessing your sins. You don't need to do that now. Go to confession. Well, look, priest, priest, I've done this, I've done that. No, 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 no. You tell God, Father, forgive me. I've sinned against you. I missed the mark. And God will hear you, wash you, cleanse you from it because Jesus has made it possible. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. You'll need to pray before an ark. They'll need the ark of the covenant. Amen. Where you going to church? Where the ark of the covenant at? Ain't y'all got some that present the ark of the covenant? No, because all of that was a shadow and a picture of Christ. All of that was to point us to Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. That one man. Glory to God has made it all possible for us. Thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. We're able ministers of the New Testament. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. That's important. Amen. Because preachers are to be preachers who know how to rightly divide the word of God, who know how to understand that they are called to preach understanding that Jesus finished this thing. He said, it is finished. In other words, I fulfill the righteousness of the law. And the Bible says, even the veil of the temple, it was rent. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So that it would open up to us access to God. And the word access that's used in the book of Hebrews, the word access that's used in the New Testament is the word that really means a private, personal interview. Good gracious almighty. That means everybody who's saved now have an opportunity to have a private, personal interview with God. Hallelujah. God will hear you, sir. God will hear you, ma'am. In your bathroom, standing up, sitting down, lying down on the bed. You don't have to be in a certain position to pray because of Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't have to have on certain clothes to pray. I don't have to have no suit on to pray. I, I can pray to God naked. I can pray to God in my shower while I'm bathing. Hallelujah. Ain't that good? Hallelujah. Did you know that right there wasn't possible until Jesus came? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Hallelujah. The people had to bring their stuff to the priest. And then the high priest would go in once a year in the Holy of Holies. But now, good grace of mighty. Hallelujah. Get up in the morning, sing to him. Get up in the morning, praise him. Because why? God sees us differently because he sees us as a result of Christ. Able ministers. Oh, my goodness. I could stay on that all night because that's that's worth it. Jesus is the pattern son. He's the perfect example. And all of that. The tabernacle, all the brazen altar. Uh, Aaron's rod that budded, all of that is a shadow and a picture of what God was going to bring on the scene through his son, Jesus Christ. And so now because of Jesus, because of Jesus, whoo, you can, God accepts your praise. God accepts your worship. God accepts your prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 71, 71. Let's go to 71. Citizen of the kingdom. You are citizen of the kingdom. See, because you need to know that you're eight minutes of the New Testament. Say, why you cover this stuff? Because see, a lot of folks still getting gypped and ripped off by people who are crooked, who got false motives. And they'll make you think that you got to send $500 to get a prayer shawl or $300 to get a blessed dime. A four hundred dollar to get a blessed dime. That's stupid. Why would you pay money to get a dime? Why would you pay only how much money to get a prayer a, a prayer shawl 
that ain't got no power in it. Amen. You want to have one? Fine. But ain't no power in that. Amen. Understand. It's your faith that needs to be released. Hallelujah. What am I supposed to do if I'm in the car and, 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 and somebody have a wreck down the road and ain't got the, that, that, that prayer shawl with me? But they need prayer. You mean tell me I can't pray? Because I, I, ain't, got, I, ain't, got that, I ain't got that prayer shawl. What? God will be looking at you like, are you kidding me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't do that. Be an able minister of the New Testament. The New Testament is trying to get you to believe the word. That's why Jesus was impressed when people believe the word. When that man said, Lord Jesus, you ain't got to come under my house. Speak the word only. And my servant will be made whole. Jesus was impressed with that kind of faith. That woman said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Now, I know back then they saying that right there was his uh, pressure on everything. But there, it was her faith that did it. Jesus doesn't give credit to the garment. He gives credit to the woman's faith. She believed that. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. It was faith. Hallelujah. I know Paul took from his, he was a tent maker from his garment. He took special, God wrought special miracles. But think about it. It was, the, it was the just to get the people to release their faith. He didn't charge them for it. Amen. There are many times when we've prayed and preached the gospel and people want a, a prayer handkerchief, we give it to them. We don't charge them for it. Come on, y'all. Saints, you better wise up. There's some people out here that will merchandise you, take advantage of your ignorance. You better wake up here and understand this, because if you don't, you'll get gypped. You'll get hoodwinked. Everybody ain't doing this for the right reason. Everybody ain't doing this to promote Christ. Some people want you to trust in their prayers and not have any faith in your own. I want you to have faith in your own prayers. Jesus died, shed his blood so that you can talk to him any place, any time, anywhere. Jesus died, shed his blood, rose from the dead so you can praise him any place, anywhere. God will hear you. He will listen to you in your pajamas, but naked. God will still listen at you in the bathroom, on the toilet. He will listen at you. Hallelujah. Upstairs, downstairs. It doesn't matter. Sitting down, standing up. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Well, I, I got to pray to God a certain time in the morning. Come on, y'all. Are you kidding me? God, he's ready. His ear is open to your cry anytime. Well, I, I, I can't pray this morning because I spoke to God and prayed at six o'clock. I didn't do it. You condemning yourself over foolishness. Stop it. Stop it. Talk to God when you get up. Talk to God during the day. Talk to him at breakfast. Talk to him at lunch. Hallelujah. How can you say that's true as a pastor and people calling you all during the day with problems and issues and things that show up all during the night? There have been times during the night when a saint went, had to go to the emergency room. So I got to get up. I answer the phone. I'm in my pajamas. I got to pray right then. I can't say, well, let me go get a prayer shawl. Let, wait a minute. I, I got to go upstairs. I got to go find that. I'll be, I'll let be. Oh, come on. Oh, hogwash. I say it's hogwash. Hallelujah. We're able ministers of the New Testament. It must be in light of the New Testament. Does what you're saying fit the, the New Testament? Hallelujah. Woo! Let's go with number 71. Citizen of the kingdom. We are citizens of the kingdom. Citizens of the kingdom. Ephesians 2, 19. Ephesians 2, 19. Listen at what it says. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers. I did? No, no, no. I'm giving this. Amen. This citizens of the kingdom. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. You are citizen of the kingdom, fellow citizens 
of the kingdom. Notice what he said, fellow citizens with the saints. Now, what does that mean? A, a, a citizen of any country is entitled to the rights and the privileges of that country. You are fellow citizens of the kingdom. Well, what are the rights and benefits of this kingdom? They are supernatural. Please write that down. Please get that in your spirit. We're talking about supernatural things. You have to go out each and every day expecting the supernatural because you're not citizens just of this world. You're not just a citizen of the United States. You are a citizen of the kingdom, which means we expect supernatural things to happen. This is important for you to release your faith in the supernatural. I'm telling you, you function, you fight and you flow on the basis of knowing who you are. Your identity affects your function, your fight and your flow. You expect supernatural battles. You expect supernatural victories. You expect supernatural releases to come your way. Something supernatural is going to happen to me and you each and every day. We expect the supernatural. Why do you go into the house of God every Sunday? I'm going there. I ain't going there looking for the natural. The supernatural. Teach me about the supernatural. Teach me how to walk in the supernatural. Talk in the supernatural. Live in the supernatural. Because I'm not supposed to live a natural life anymore. I'm supposed to live a supernatural life. This is a supernatural lifestyle that contains supernatural benefits. It's all about being a citizens of this kingdom. Oh, my God, I did. All right. All right. I'm all right. That's OK. That's OK. Well, what number was it then? Hey, man, I'm on 72. I ain't said that. I'm going over all my, my points. I ain't got that no on there. I may have covered, said it, but I ain't got that as one of the points. Okay. All right. All right. See? Amen. You better listen at me now. Let me help you. Number 72. You are a benefactor of Christ. You are a benefactor of Christ. You are a benefactor of Christ. Look at Psalm 116, verse 12. He said, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? A benefactor of Christ, a benefactor of the anointing. What should I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? God, there are benefits that come with this thing. It's like you working for a company. When you work for a company, you get benefits. You want to know what are the benefits. And they say there's health benefits. You get dental benefits. You might get other benefits that other companies don't have. Where there are benefits for being in Christ for being on God's side. Look at Psalm 103. I, I, I've said this, but I want you to look at it. Psalm 103, verse one through five. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, all, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, all his benefits, all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, healeth all thy disease, redeem thy life from destruction, Crown thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Satisfy thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. These are benefits. You are, that's what you should expect. Look at Psalm 68 and 19. Now, here's a verse that, that, that goes right back to the point I said as a citizen of the kingdom. This is a verse that a lot of people don't get. Look at Psalm 68, 19. Mark it down. Look at it and claim it. Psalm 68, verse 19, because a lot of saints, they don't live like this because, again, they don't know who they are. And nobody's taking out the time to teach, teach us who we are. We said, you need to know who you are in Christ. I remember hearing people say that. So you know who you are in Christ. But nobody never taught me. Look at Psalm 68, verse 19 it says, blessed be the Lord. Watch this. Who daily loaded us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, see law. Now here's, the, listen at this verse, who daily loaded us with benefits. Every single day, 
You can expect God to forgive you if you miss it. Every single day, you can expect help, prosperity, and victory. Every single day, you should go out. Don't leave out the door with low expectation. Leave out the door saying, I'm going out this door and some supernatural going to happen. I'm going out this door. I'm going to meet somebody at the right place at the right time. The supernatural is triggered. And the day will be a day where I see the benefits of God. Every single day. My to every single time I leave out the door, some supernatural happens. I call her back and say, oh, guess what happened? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some supernatural going to happen. Some, because he daily loaded us with benefits. But because we're not expecting it, God cannot move beyond our level of expectation. Do you, do you expect this day to be a day of benefits? No, you just probably got up. Uh, this Monday, another day, or it's Tuesday, just another day. No, it ain't just another day. This is the day the Lord has made. God created this day. God got some benefits in store for me this day. He would not have created and let me live this day unless it's a day where I'm going to see the benefits of being a servant of God. He's going to load me with some benefits today. A benefit is something that gives you an advantage. Every single day, God going to do something that gives you an advantage. He's going to do something that makes you know that you are highly favored. You've got to be looking for it, though. You've got to be expecting it, though. And it'll happen. It'll be supernatural. Ta-ta-ba-ba-ku-sha. I told you how I went down there to Apostle Mal Williams' birthday and celebrating him. While I'm trying to celebrate him, somebody come up and give me some money in my hand. Something supernatural happens all the time. Something supernatural stirs all the time because he daily. Look, either this is a lie or you lying. Or maybe you don't know how to release your faith for it. So I'm telling you to stand on Psalm 68, 19, start releasing your faith for it, and then you'll start looking for it, and God will not disappoint you. God will not disappoint you. A benefit might be while you're driving your car, somebody come on your side of the road, and then God don't let them hit you. That's a benefit. That's a blessing. Hallelujah. I was driving one time. I was almost to the house. I just told my wife a testimony. Before I could almost get home, a car came on my side of the road, almost hit me. Evangelist Bellamy's daughter saw it. Amen. And said, oh, my God, saw your pastor almost got hit. Didn't get hit, though. Why? That's a benefit. Glory to God. <laughs> of being saved, of being filled with the Holy Ghost, of being on God's side. Let me give you one more, and I'll stop with this one right here for tonight. I'm stopping with 73. We'll pick up next week. You are a demonic tormentor. Listen at me now. Who you are? You are a demonic tormentor. See, people who ain't saved, they working with the devil. They in cahoots with the devil. Or how you pronounce it? Cohorts or cahoots? <laughs> in other words, they working with the devil. But you and I, we are demonic tormentors. We are to torment the devil. You and I are demonic tormentors. Look at Mark 16 and 17. Mark 16 and 17 says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Watch this in my name. The first thing that Jesus mentioned that we ought to do in his name. He said they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Look at Mark 10 and 1. And when he had Call unto him his twelve disciples. He gave them power or authority against unclean spirits to cast them out, to throw them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. We are to torment the devil by laying hands on the sick, by helping other people get well. We are demonic tormentors because the devil is trying to make people sick. He wants people in pain and we torment the devil by laying hands on the sick, seeing the sick recover. We torment the devil by helping somebody get saved, helping somebody get out of darkness, helping somebody hear the word of God. Every single day, we must see ourselves as demonic tormentors. When Jesus got on that side where that man that was, had all them demons in him, 
He said, them demons said, we are legion. Jesus said, what is your name? Legion, for we are many. He said, art thou come to torment us before time? In other words, Jesus was tormenting him. Glory to God. He tormented the devil. All right? I stop right there. Thank you so much for watching tonight. I pray this message helped you knowing our identity in Christ. This is what you want to do every single day. Go out knowing who you are. Study it. Meditate on it. Amen. Meditate on who you are. Amen. Remember, in God, it's all about being before it is about having. Most people think about having and don't think about being. If you be who God says you are, you will have what God says you can have. Hallelujah. Because it's about being. Jesus never worried about having because Jesus knew who he was. He was the word made flesh. So when you know who you are, why should you worry about having? Amen. Right. If your daddy is rich, why should you worry about money? and You his child. <laughs> Why should you worry about these things? That's why Jesus told us, hey, I take care of the lilies, take care of the birds. How much more would your heavenly father take care of you? O ye of what? The problem. Little faith. Hmm? You think God cares more about a bird and flowers and grass than he does us? Absolutely not. We are more vital. Hallelujah. Let's know who we are. Let's know who we are. Thank you for watching. If you're not saved, you are indeed lost. You are indeed servant and serving the wrong person. We want you to be a child of God. God want to make you his. He wants you to be an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ. He wants you to be all these things I'm talking about. And he wants you to function, fight and flow out of that. You desire to be saved, give us a call at 252-563-5382. 252-563-5382. Come on, start your new year off right by being a new creature in Christ. All of these messages can be viewed, can be watched, can be looked at over and over again on Facebook Live, on Facebook rather, or on YouTube. You can check them all out because you need it and it'll get in you. And wherever you go, you will fight different. You will, I mean, you will function different. You will fight different and you will flow different if you know who you are. Hallelujah. All right. Write down these times every Tuesday. We're right here from 730 till about 830. Sometimes we go an hour and 15 minutes, but usually we stop right at 830. And every Thursday we're here from seven o'clock to 730. I only give you 30 minutes on Thursday because I'm trying my best, amen, to uh, give you these sharp points that will help you be effective. I'm telling you, we've been talking about powerful thinking makes for powerful living. Oh, shate cool, baba. Yeah, that's what we're talking about on Thursday night. It's going to be powerful. You need to be there with us this Thursday at seven o'clock. Sharp points. And then each and every Sunday. We are having an awesome time at 1030. Now, let me apologize to some of you who may have missed us because we did not come on right at 1030 this past Sunday. But it wasn't our fault. The whole city in the area where our local church is located, not the whole city itself, but the area where our local facility is located. The lights went out. The power that a power outage which caused us to have to come on later than what we normally been coming on. But we did come on and you can go back and look at it on Facebook. There's a message called fat type in Bishop Van Sharp and then put put fat F A T and then put Bishop Van Sharp. Amen. And, and pull it up. And listen at that word, because that's the word that God gave us for 2022. Amen. He gave us a word to stand on from Psalms. Amen. That we are standing on this whole year. Psalm 65 verses 9 through 11. Verse 11 is the main verse that we standing on. And then Psalms 
20, I mean, Proverbs 28 and 25, Proverbs 28 and 25. Go back and look at it and listen at all those things that we're talking about this year. This is going to be a fat year for you. Facebook yeah, Facebook and YouTube. You can check it out. All right. Now, each and every Sunday, we're at Newness of Life Christian Center at 10 o'clock. That's what time that praise and worship starts. Amen. And hopefully, maybe before the year out, we're going to let you sometime hear some of our praise and worship. But right now, amen, we dive straight into the word at 1030. But if you are anywhere near Tarboro, anywhere near Albemarle Avenue, meet us each and every Sunday morning at about at, at 936 Albemarle Avenue. Amen. 936 Albemarle Avenue in Tarboro. We start at 10 a.m. Amen. Powerful time. Powerful word. All right. Amen. We are back in the building. All right. So at Facebook, right here on this platform at 1030 and YouTube, if you know some of your relatives and loved ones, they don't have Facebook. They can watch it at 1030 live the same time you're watching it right there on YouTube. So at YouTube and Facebook is coming on at 1030 live. You can check out the uh, particular program. It'll bless your life. Several ways to give to Newness of Life Christian Center, NOLCC. Here's how you do it. We want you to start your year off. If you're not tithing, listen, don't go this year stealing from God. Don't go this year robbing God. Trust the system that God has in place called tithes and offerings. Bring your tithes and offerings in the storehouse. There may be meat in my house. God promised to open up the windows of heaven, pour you and I out a blessing we won't have room enough to receive. So if you are not a part of a local church, but you need good ground to sow in, come on now. You can't just do this. This ain't no get rich quick scheme. This is by you being fat. What I said means faithful. You got to do it over and over again. Trust the system. You got to be having the right attitude and you have to be teachable. Listen at me. You need good ground to sow in. Here's good ground, newness of life. Or you just want to sow a seed to our local church. Here's what you do. You write out a check or a money order to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. Again, Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. Zip code 27886. Also, you can download the Vanco, Vanco mobile app. V-A-N-C-O, mobile app. You'll see it there on your screen. If you are watching it by YouTube, you won't see it, but it's the Vanco, V-A-N-C-O, mobile app. And type in Newness of Life Christian Center. That gonna, The church going to pop up and you can sow a seed. Download the Vanco mobile app. Type in Newness of Life Christian Center and sow that seed that will bring you a harvest. Also, to bless my wife and I personally, again, amen. We have no unmet needs, but at the same time, we know that this is a way for you to get blessed. So if you would like to be a blessing to us personally, here's what you do. You go to your cash app, type in the dollar sign. When you type in the dollar sign, then type in R-E-V, a small R, small E, small V, S-H-A-R-P, small letters, R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P. That doesn't stand for Rev Sharp. It stands for Reese and Van. So that's the way we put it in there. R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. Okay. When you do that, sow that seed and expect a harvest. Again, anything you're doing, don't just go through the motion. Expect the harvest. All right. Again, we thank God for all of you who watched tonight. Shout out to my man, Vincent Bellamy tonight. And your lovely wife, Evangelist Jackie Bellamy. Shout out to uh, Ladorius Leonard. All right. Cynthia Wilkins. Way to go. I mean, Cynthia Wilkins give good comments. And Ladorius, all of y'all give good comments. We appreciate it. Letitia Boney. All right. Uh, who else we got? All right. We got, oh, Bishop Wayne. My brother was watching tonight. Shout out to Bishop Ronald Wayne Sharp, a preaching machine. <laughs> he has a birthday this month. That's right. His birthday is going to be Friday, right? No. What is it? It's the seventh. Yeah, that's Friday. No, it's not Friday. Yeah, yes, it is. is it Friday? January the seventh. Okay. It's Friday. Okay. Yeah, it's Friday. birthday Friday. Friday. Let me make sure here. It yeah, it is Friday. Friday. Yeah, that's right. His birthday is Friday. Shout out to that's right. 
Shout out to Sabrina Williams. Her birthday is tomorrow. Sabrina Williams, a great woman of God, Bishop Ronald Wayne birthday. Amen. So happy birthday to my brother. Happy birthday, Sabrina. Also, uh, we have some more people. Who else got some birthdays this month? Uh, Kim and brother Kimwood got a birthday. Shout out to Brother Kimwood is and Mother Yancey. That's right. Mother Yancey wants to make sure I announce hers. Hers is Saturday. That's right. J- yeah, her and Brother Kimwood is Saturday, January the 8th. Amen. And uh, I want to send a special shout out to uh, Vanessa Gaston. She had hers on January the 1st. That's right. She was a year older. Amen. Uh, yeah, New Year's Day. Who else was born on New Year's Day? No. Somebody else? Raquel. I thought, I thought, oh yeah, okay, I want Tasha birthday. Oh, no, okay, 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 all right. Anyway, all right. Shout out to Vanessa Gaston. I call her Queen V. All right. Uh, Brenda Edwards is watching. Is, is that one of that uh, Apostle Edwards' wife? Amen. If it is, let me know there. Amen. Thank God for Apostle Edwards. Amen. Anyway, Donna Davis, shout out to Donna. Amen. If it is, if that Brenda, that, that's the young woman of God that graduated with me from high school. Anyway, shout out to Minnie Heath. All right. Amen. Hey. Sister Minnie, love that woman of God. Hey. Amen. She's in Greensboro, North Carolina now. She served, amen, me and served ministry for many years. It was a joy to pass the Sister Minnie. We love you, Sister Minnie. A special shout out to you. Happy New Year to you. Amen. Be fat spiritually. Be fat naturally. Let God fatten your pocketbook up. Shout out to my man, David Steed. Amen. Good to know you're watching, man of God. And we're praying for you to continue to get stronger and stronger. Amen. After fighting COVID and other things. Uh, Deborah Rivers is watching. Way to go. Tanya Gullett. Thinking of Happy New Year, Tanya. Amen. We love you. Miss you down here in North Carolina. She's in New New Jersey. I mean, she's in New Jersey now. Gloria Knight watching tonight. Glad to know you're watching, Gloria. Audrey Bullock is watching. Jerry and Drake. Uh, Gregory King is watching. Uh, who else? Uh, uh, Glendora. Glendora Bone. I thought I mentioned her already. Okay, Glendora Bone. Uh, Prophetess Sylvia Anderson. Amen. Great woman of God. Love you. Happy New Year, Prophetess. Get fat this year spiritually first and then naturally. Let's get fat. We're going to get fat. Cedric Wooten is watching. Way to go, man of, man of God. Thank you so much for sowing so faithfully and blessing my wife and I. We appreciate uh, what you do. Amen. Uh, shout out to my daughter. Vanika is watching. And the grands. Amen. Kason, Tayden, Adalyn. Glad to know y'all are watching. Happy New Year. Love you. Oh, my man is watching. Wayne Evans out of Delaware. Shout out to my cl- uh, show you classmate out of Delaware. Mary Richardson is watching. Way to go. Is that Maggie? Maggie Sharp is watching. All right, Maggie. And who else? Cynthia McLean. Uh, McLean. And, yeah. Is it McLean or McLean? Anyway, shout out to you, Cynthia. Glad to know you're watching and many, many more are watching. Amen. And we love you. NOLCC family, one of the greatest churches in all the world. We love you. Thank God for you watching tonight. We love you. Don't forget to get some of our good reading material. Amen. Our latest book is entitled Let the Prophet Speak. Show us our way. We need the prophetic in this hour. Somebody who's really hearing from God. Again, go back over that message. It's entitled Fat. F-A-T. F-A-T. I guarantee it's going to help you. This is the year of you being faithful, having the right attitude and being teachable. Fat. God want to make us fat spiritually and fat naturally. Fat in the natural, financially. God, It is the will of God for you to be made fat. Hallelujah. The Bible said in the book of Isaiah, let your soul delight itself in fatness. God want to fatten us up. Amen. Spiritually. Again, thank you for watching tonight. See you Thursday, seven o'clock right here on this platform. God bless you. Have a tremendous night.